This device is called the Alphabet Browser. Um, we have a knob here and um, audio and haptic feedback. And we use it for browsing large lists of files. Um, for the particular example we've got um, set up, we're browsing um, MP3 files that are held on um, a prototype of an MP3 player. And what we'd like to be able to do is scroll very quickly through the list um, and be able to find the track that we want. So we've ripped lots of tracks from the web, lots of um, individual artists, and we'd like to quickly find the track we want. So I can. what happens is when I turn the knob quickly, I'll bounce from A to B to C through the alphabet. More slowly, I'll actually hear the tracks. When I turn it more slowly, I'll hear the tracks underneath. We imagine this device is going to be used in um, portable devices such as MP3 players where you won't actually have a screen. Um, at the moment, they're actually tiny little screens that get very complicated to um, see and to um, manipulate. So um, with this demo then, I'm going to very slowly go through my tracks. So I'm turning the wheel very slowly here. And if I start going quickly, I'll bounce through the other bit. And then back to the slow index. And back again to the fast. To the end of the alphabet. And I can scroll back again to A. And I start again through my list. So we're imagining a great many number of tracks that we've got underneath and a way of quickly indexing through the alphabet. This is a device that we're calling the Rock and Scroll. It's a prototype device for browsing through large channel spaces and providing haptic feedback. So the device actually gives you two degrees of freedom. One is around in a circle. And in this application, as you move around, you switch from channel to channel. And the other degree of freedom is as you push in. Now, the way this application works is that you get a little kick as you switch from channel to channel. There's a haptic detent that's provided. And since it's a motor, we can change the force of the detent. So this channel is actually a favorite channel, and it's, it has a stronger force attracting you to that channel as you switch around. Now, this other degree of freedom is used to get a bird's eye view of the space. So you can get an overview of all these channels. This is something that's always present in your television at home, this notion of a, a ring of channels, but you never actually get to see this. So in, in our application, we've made that visible and directly connected it to this device to give you a sense of changing channels that's more like a game rather than some sort of an uh, abstract task to complete. This is another haptic device for navigating uh, video and other types of media. This one isn't in a form that you would find in some sort of final application, but rather a mechanical prototype. What we're exploring with this one is using a brake rather than a motor to provide force feedback. So with the brake, you can't push a person, but you can hold them back. And with actually a, a not that expensive brake, we can get a pretty fine quality of haptic experience. So in this application, you get little bumps as you move from channel to channel. And there's more resistant on several channels to indicate that they're your favorite. If you leave the brake alone for a moment, the channel will zoom in. So if you go quickly, you can zoom out and see the entire channel space. And then if you leave it alone, it will pop back. Now, the things we found with the brake are that it's one, a cheaper device, and two, it's actually a lot less frightening for our users because it's not possible to kick them or otherwise hurt them. All of the energy in the system comes from the person using the device. This is a device that we're calling generically the tagged handle wheel. We were trying to figure out ways to incorporate different functions into the same uh, motor. We have a motor mounted here with several uh, differently textured buttons and when you select each of these buttons it has a different function. So if you select the yellow button you can change channels. We have a simulated digital video channels here and you'll feel a little bump as you move from channel to channel including uh, different size bumps depending on which are your favorites. Now if we choose this green button 
then we just have our favorite channels. So normally with remote control, you just have your last two channels you can toggle between. But with this type of a control, you could have your two, three, four, or any number of favorite channels that you always want to look for. Uh, when we choose this black button, we can look at digital video. So this is implementing the fisheye metaphor. When I press lightly, I advance rapidly. Or when I press hard, I advance rapidly through this video. And when I press lightly, I advance slowly. So at the same time, I can go quickly to a scene and then find an individual frame. Now, with this blue button, uh, I can move absolutely through a, through a movie. So I just get frames at an evenly spaced interval. But if I push this, the movie will advance at whatever speed I uh, let go. So with haptics, we can remove friction from a system and do something that's not quite realistic. Now, finally, this white button lets you control volume. Uh, we don't have audio running right now in this demonstration, but a change in uh, viscosity uh, gives you feedback on what the volume level is. Now, we actually imagine this as a universal remote control, so switching these buttons would enable these same behaviors to control different media. So, for example, switching channels would mean switching CD tracks in an audio system. So on the first channel I'm playing James Bond. On my second channel I have the Future Sound of London. If I lightly rest my finger over the channel without applying very much pressure, I get a bit of the Future Sound of London leaking through. And on my third channel, even if I run my finger along, I have an audio book playing, which is Finnegan's Week. Early in bed, and later on life down through all Christian minstrelsy. The great fall of the off wall entailed, at such short notice, the shoot of the. I've now selected Finnegan's Wake by pushing the button in. Again, if I push the button himself, in here, I only get the future sound of London. I'm going to go back to my audiobook lightly to see if it's still continuing. And take off back to the future sound of London. Using this device, uh, we've developed a simple little vocabulary to, to control audio streams. For instance, a downward stroke, uh, uh, the machine will request what channel you want. Channel. And then with some number of fingers, it'll count how many fingers you put down and select that, that number. Mm. So we've, ch we've selected channel two. Of course, this is a primitive first start. And then for instance, for sweeping across this way, pauses it, sweeping across another way, uh, a second time. Uh, 